the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Word 2019 Advanced. This is still Deb and we are down in section 7 where we've been taking a look at breaks, predominantly section and page breaks. In this module we're going to take a look at a different way of dividing up your document and that is by using master and sub documents. Now you may or may not have heard of master and sub documents, they have been around in Word for a very long time but they tend to be something that are not as widely used, mainly because I find people don't really understand what they are and why they are useful. And I will say they are only really useful if you are someone who works with very large documents. And I'm talking 100 pages plus. So the most obvious example of this would be if you are writing a book. So let's use that as our example. Now, if you are writing a book that's several hundred pages long, saving it as a single document can be impractical. So when you started writing your book, you just opened up a Word document and you've written all of your chapters in one document, causing your Word document to be hundreds of pages long. And what that means is that even performing simple tasks on that document, like editing, Copying, pasting, searching, even doing things like find and replace are less efficient the larger the document becomes. Sometimes it's a lot easier to manage a large document if you split it up into smaller documents and then essentially merge them together, which is pretty much what the master and sub documents feature is all about. And that is exactly what we're going to do here. So in this example, we are going to run with that example of a book. And this is my book template from earlier with a title page of how to create an online training course. And then as I scroll down, you'll see at the start here, I have a dedication. I then have a foreword, some acknowledgements, and then some introductory text. I then have a part one cover page, and what I hope to have after this are all of my chapters that make up part one. Now previously, I just had all of my chapters in this one document. What I'm going to do here, and you can see that I've already deleted them out, is that I've actually saved each chapter off into its own separate Word document. And you can see all of those files sitting just here. So I've created a folder on my desktop called Chapters, and then I have Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, so on and so forth. So essentially, I have a whole bunch of mini sub-documents that I want to put into this master document. And what this means is that in future going forward, if I need to do any editing or if I need to do any formatting changes, I have my document divided down into smaller chunks, which is a lot easier to manage and also a lot easier for Word to process efficiently. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, if I've got everything saved off into different documents, isn't that going to make it a lot harder when I want to print or publish this book? Well, no, that is one of the features of master and sub documents. So what we're going to do here is after part one, I'm going to go down onto this blank page and I'm going to insert the chapter one sub document. Now, the first thing I need to do here is we need to work in outline view. So let's jump up to our view ribbon into our views group and click on outline. So I'm going to scroll up and you can see here I now have this document in outline view. I have my part one and then it says write your part one title. Now, if you want to, to make this a bit clearer to see, you can also jump to home and turn on your paragraph marks so you can also see exactly where you have page breaks. So I have a page break after this part one cover page. So I want to make sure that my mouse is clicked just after that page break. Now, as soon as I jump into outline view, I get the outlining contextual ribbon. And the group of commands we're going to be working with are in this master document group. And currently, I only have one that's available for me to access. That is the Show Document button. So when I click on this button, you'll see it gives me a couple of other options that I can use. The first one is Create, and the second one is Insert. Now, in this example, we're going to be using Insert because I already have my sub-documents saved off. So let's click on Insert. And you can see it takes me to File Explorer, where I can then browse for my sub-documents. 
So it's jumped me straight to the correct folder, which is brilliant. So I'm going to select chapter one and click on open. And you can see it puts that chapter into the master document. And in this particular view, in outline view, this does look kind of ugly, but rest assured when you switch back to print layout view, the document's going to look completely normal. And when you print or publish it, it's going to look absolutely fine as well. Now let's just check that. Let's close outline view to jump back to print layout view and see what our document now looks like. So I have my part one cover page, scroll down and there we go, I have my chapter one. But essentially I'm working within a sub document now when I'm clicking around in this area. Let's go back to the view ribbon and into outline view and let's insert our next chapter. So I'm going to click underneath my first chapter, up to show document, click on insert and I'm going to select chapter two and click on open. And there we have chapter two. Now my final two chapters I'm going to put in after this part two page. So I want to make sure I'm clicked after the section break, up to insert, chapter three, open, insert, chapter four, open. And I could carry on going. Now if I close outline view again, you can see that in the document, this is all looking absolutely fine. So nothing weird is going on here, even though it does look a little strange when you're viewing it in outline view. And of course, if you see anything that looks a bit strange, like section breaks that shouldn't be there, you can of course delete those out. Now let's jump back to our outline view one more time, because I just want to show you what the difference is when it comes to this insert and create button. So insert is if you already have a sub document saved off. You would use the create button if you want to create a sub document on the fly essentially. So if I click on create, you can see it opens up this little box here and this is essentially a sub document. So I could manually type my sub document directly into this section. And what you'll also see up in the master document group is that I also now have an unlink button. And this is essentially if you want to remove your sub document. So it says delete the link to the sub document and copy the sub document content into the master document. So if I click unlink, you can see that it's got rid of the sub document, the little box around the outside, which denotes a sub document. And this junk text that I've just typed in is now part of the main document. I could do the same for the one above. So if I'm clicked in this sub document just here, so this is chapter four, you can see that the unlink button now becomes active again. And if I click it, it's going to remove this sub document and just make chapter four part of the master document again. Now, another advantage of creating your document in this way is that you're reducing the size of your main file. So if you have a master document that has 350 pages, that file size is going to be very large. By breaking it down into smaller chunks, you're managing smaller file sizes. So it means you're going to have less of an issue with things running a little bit slowly or maybe a little bit of lag when you're working in your documents. When it comes time to print your book, if we just close out of outline view, you'll see if we jump across to file and go down to print, the document looks exactly as you would expect it to look. So utilizing master and sub documents is something to consider if you work with extremely long documents and you want to do it in a way that's really efficient and makes your life easier. That's it for this module. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, Click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.